I see a lot of energy in the room today. And uh, the moment you see this word law, I'm sure you must be all uh, you know, bored and frustrated because the word itself is a very, very boring word, right? You agree with me? I wanted to be uh, you know, a little interactive because law is not interesting as <laughs> technology and other subjects are. So I request everyone to be interactive so that, you know, uh, let us help each other to share knowledge. So as uh, they requested, Q&A can be, you know, taken up later. But uh, let us, you know, make this like a duet song. I mean, I don't want a solo song here. So I'll be quizzing you and I hope we, you know, get a good interactive platform to share whatever, you know, we are uh, discussing today. Okay. Uh, before I go ahead with my uh, topic, I'd like to just uh, tell you something about myself because, uh, you know, I'm uh, completely a non-technical uh, person. I'm from the legal front. I'm, uh, you know, basically a lawyer. I specialize in cyber laws and cyber security. I run my own law firm in Hyderabad, uh, you know, which is completely only into cyber laws, information security and all that. And I'm also into the various other domains like cyber crime investigation, cyber forensics, site security, uh, compliance, which I'll be talking of, and all these new areas. And we, in fact, have started a very you know, innovative kind of a knowledge sharing unit in Hyderabad, which we call it as Cyber Loss Knowledge Center. The main objective of this particular center is to you know, encourage people to you know, uh, 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 share their knowledge on cyber laws. We, we do conduct a lot of awareness workshops at the schools, colleges, corporates, and you know, at almost all levels. So that is a small intro about me. You know, I'm sorry because you know I just want to uh, tell my background before I could you know start. Okay, uh, one question to all of you: uh, the law is considered to be one of the most boring subjects. Can you tell me why? Because it is the only subject that is there from centuries. What my father? I come from a legal background. My grandfather is a lawyer. My dad is a lawyer, and I'm a lawyer. So it's the same subject. Same books, no absolutely no change in the entire syllabus. So typically, law is the most boring subject. But cyber law is a very unique piece of law. It has never happened so far. Because, because it is the only law that keeps on changing as technology grows. It is, you know, we cannot have one law for a lifetime because technology is growing at such a fast pace that law is also trying its best, though not be able to reach it at that level, but it's also trying to get, you know, in sync with the times. So this is something about, you know, since I come from the legal background, I just wanted to share this with you. Okay, uh, I'll not take much time, I'll try to confine myself to very few areas because some of my uh, areas have already been, been covered by the earlier speaker. So I'll quickly go through you know, them. I'd like to start off with some basic definitions that, you know, we, all of us sitting here will be able to answer somewhere down the line. Okay, number one, what's a lecture? Any idea? Can anybody tell me what's a lecture? We hear, we hear a lot of lectures. Anybody from the audience? What's a lecture? Okay, I'll not take much time. I'll define it this way. It's an art of transferring information from the notes of the lecturer or the speaker to the notes of the students without passing through the minds of either. I hope it doesn't happen in my presentation at least, and I hope it doesn't happen in this conference. And number two, what's a conference? This is a conference, I suppose. What's a conference? It's a confusion of one man multiplied by the number present. I'm thankful that the number is not that much, so therefore the confusion also will not be that much. And finally, this is a conference room. What's a conference room? It is a place where everybody talks, nobody listens. Everybody disagrees later on, once you go out of this room. That person who spoke about law and everything, no, no, no. That's all crap, that's all bullshit. So this is the kind of uh, response that, you know, we evoke, especially after uh, you know, hearing to a uh, lot of uh, technical information and lots of, you know, information getting into, a lot of knowledge being uh, shared by a lot of uh, people from various industries. So I define it this way. No, I'm not, uh, it's, it's just to make you light, because as I told you, law is never going to be interesting. I'll try my best to make it interesting, and uh, I, I know, assure you that you can have some entertainment, and people at the uh, top, I'll be using you because, just to keep you away from sleep. So please cooperate with me, and then we'll see that, you know, you can uh, make this a kind of good interactive uh, session. 
Okay, uh, I'm sure you must have been, uh, you know, seeing uh, uh, what what is happening on the internet, what is happening over the mobiles. Today, mobiles have become, you know, I don't want, I don't want to talk much about cyber crimes because the earlier speaker has, you know, given you an insight about what are the different kinds of cyber crimes that are, you know, happening. Today, mobiles have become central to our lives. Uh, is there anybody in this room who does not have a mobile? Is there anybody like that in this room who doesn't carry a piece of mobile? No, right? All of us carry, whether it's use, whether we use it for our professional purpose, whether you may use it for networking, whether you use it for uh, communication, anything. Today, mobile is a central part of our life. And what happens with these mobiles? Today, we have you know, a lot of technology that's come up. We have something called Android. I'm sure everybody knows here, you know, people, especially the youngsters, who have been using uh, you know, Android phones, tablets, and all these kinds of stuff. So a lot of these uh, gadgets have provided a lot of advantages to us. And we not only store our professional data, we also store our personal data, maybe your photographs, maybe your videos, maybe the songs, or maybe anything, maybe your uh, contact details, maybe your birthdays, anything. A lot of information has been stored in the mobile. But can I ask you a simple question? We heard that there are antivirus for your uh, computers. But how many of us do we know that there are antivirus for mobiles here? Do you know? Have you heard of that? Or did you install an antivirus on your mobile? I'm happy because you know uh, uh, there are a couple of uh, people who are you know, aware of this. This is really important because today mobiles are you know, becoming very, very important. And uh, as I told you, it's very important even to secure our mobiles. And I emphasize on the word that they can never be a 100% foolproof technology. You cannot say I'm 100% secured, especially when you're talking of the digital world. Because a lot of things are happening in the digital world. Uh, what I mean by digital world is if you're dealing with the seven parameters, you know what are the seven parameters that go on to form the digital world? If you're dealing with computers, computer systems, computer resources, computer networks, communication devices, all your smartphones, data or information in electronic form. If you're dealing with any of these, you need to be awake. Because apart from knowing what are the technical aspects, there is a law that's going to come up. And it's already come up. That's going to cut across your legs. And as always, I end my presentation this way, but today I'm beginning this way. Ignorance of law is no excuse in the eyes of law. So you don't have to be the lawyers, you don't have to be this advocate generals, you don't have to be the person from the police. As a common man, you need to be aware that what the law says and what is it all about. Because as I told you, you cannot tomorrow say, I did not know that such and such a thing was an offense. You cannot take that difference. This is the main objective and uh, uh, goal of my presentation to tell you what exactly the, is the legal mandate and especially when you are talking of cyber laws. Uh, do you know that we have a cyber law in India? Any idea? Do we have? They, they, do they exist a law like that? Okay, what is uh, Indian cyber law? Any ex example? Can you give me any idea? We hear a lot of terms now. So the moment we talk of law, we have civil, criminal, matrimonial uh, laws, we have succession, and we have a lot of things. But what is the uh, law that is relating to computers or you know, cyber world? We have in India an act which is called the Information Technology Act. The year was 2000. 12 years or 13 years back, this law came into force on October 17, 2000. It was, those were early days when the law came and focus of law was you know, not to we have some laws here I mean uh, uh, did you hear of something called IPC we see a lot of movies a lot of these uh, court scenes happening in movies where they say according to this section according to that section IPC criminal law and all this stuff the main objective of those laws is to punish criminal activities but cyber law the main objective or goal of cyber law is to promote e-commerce uh, anybody can tell me what's an e-commerce? What is e-commerce? Any example of an e-commerce site? Uh, eBay. eBay, fantastic. So when you are basically utilizing the digital platform 
for selling and buying your products. Means basically, the